quick disclaimer, this creepypasta I'm about to share with you guys is quite disturbing and graphic, so if you're not into that type of thing, which is fair enough, maybe don't watch this video, or put it on mute and listen to some music and just watch the art process. Also, I'm gonna be having a bit of a rant at the end of this video about this story, because I have some strong opinions about it, and not necessarily positive ones. And on that note, here is the Torture Fest, otherwise known as Cupcakes. The air was warm, the sun was shining, and every pony in Ponyville was having a glorious day. The town square was bustling and crowded, and busy ponies filled the streets. All the pony folk seemed to have somewhere specific to be. All except Rainbow Dash. Her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and the next, buzzing the treetops and racing the wind. The blue Pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to the delight of the children, then climbed several hundred feet and dove, streaking downwards as fast as she could. Seconds before hitting the ground, her wings flew open, and she pulled up back into the clear blue. Rainbow felt alive. Suddenly, Dash remembered that she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet with Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gotten so caught up in her exercises, she'd nearly forgotten that Pinkie had asked to meet her at Sugar Cube Corner at three. Pinkie hadn't said why or what they'd be doing, but Dash knew that with Pinkie, it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though. She was so engaged with her stunts that she thought about blowing Pinkie off to continue flying, but Dash's conscience got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinkie's feelings, after all. Pinkie had said it was going to be something special just for the two of them. Dash considered it and thought, why not? What did she have to lose? Heck, it might be more pranking. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on folks, and they'd had so much fun the last time. Dash kicked into overdrive to make up for lost time and sped to her appointment. When Dash walked into the store, she was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing with excitement. Yay, you're here. I've been waiting all day said the jumping pony. Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time, Dash apologised. Pinky giggled and responded in a gleefully reassuring tone. Oh, it's okay. You're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't stopped bouncing since I woke up. I mean, I almost forgot to breathe. I've been so happy. Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. She was always appreciative of Pinkie Pie's friendly, outgoing way of life. But Pinkie's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out. Dash maintained a polite expression, however. If Pinkie was this worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So, you're ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I've got everything all ready, the pink pony said. Dash psyched herself up. You betcha, Pinky. So, what you got planned? We gonna prank somebody? I got a couple of good ones I've been thinking about. Or maybe you've got some stunts you think I should try. Or perhaps... Making cupcakes, Pinky happily announced. Baking... Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember last time? Oh, that's not a problem at all. I only need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work, Pinky explained. Dash thought about it for a second. Well, alright. I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here you go. Pinky handed Dash a cupcake. Dash was puzzled. 
I thought I was helping you bake. You will be. I made this one just for you before you got here. So, is this like taste testing or something? Sorta, Pinky said. Dash shrugged and popped the cupcake into her mouth. She chewed it a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Okay, now what? Dash asked. Now, Pinky informed her, you take a nap. Puzzled, Dash opened her mouth, but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her. The world spun, and seconds later, she collapsed to the floor. When Dash regained consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head, but found that a taut leather strap held her firmly in place. She struggled to move, but braces around her chest and limbs glued her to a rack formed from a series of sturdy planks, which spread her legs wide apart. Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, and they fluttered frantically while she struggled to escape. As she writhed, Pinky jumped suddenly into her line of sight. Goody, you're awake. Now we can get started, Pinky stated gleefully. She bound into the darkness and quickly reappeared, pushing a small cart covered with a cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move, Dash said urgently. Well, duh, that's because you're tied down chided Pinky. That's why you can't move. I didn't think you'd need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was going to help make cupcakes. You are helping. You see, I ran out of the special ingredient, and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and starting to panic. What special ingredient? Pinky giggled and responded, You, silly. Dash's eyes widened and her face contorted in fear. Then she started to laugh and said, in a voice bordering on hysteria, Woo, you got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to get made into a cupcake. I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. You win. You're the best. Pinky only giggled even more. Ah, thanks, Dash. But I haven't done any pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash was struggling again. Pinky, come on, this isn't funny. Then why were you laughing? Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and whipped it off the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sharp medical tools and knives, carefully organised and wickedly sharp, as well as a large medical bag. Dash was now in full panic mode. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this, Pinky. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy that I've got you here. We get to share your last moments together, just you and me. Pinky was skipping again. But the other ponies will wonder where I am. When the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me, and then you'll get found out. Dash cried in desperation. Oh, Dash, said Pinky. Don't worry, there are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds. And besides, no one will find out. I mean... How long do you think I've been doing this? And with that ominous statement, the lights suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Oh no, Dash reeled in horror at the image presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flare. Colourful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around on the ceiling Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls, 
and organs done up in pastels, filled with helium, were tied to the back of chairs. The tables and chairs were made of bones and the preserved flesh of past ponies. Dash cringed upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals, their eyes closed as if they were sleeping, were wearing party hats made from their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Dash recognised one of them as Apple Bloom's classmate, Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth, and then fell upon a patchwork banner hanging from the rafters, made from several tanned pony hides. The words, Life is a party, were scrolled on it in blood red. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn unfurling and tickling her nose. She gaped at Pinkie Pie, who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin, emblazoned with cute marks. On her back fluttered six pegasus wings, all of different colours. As the earth pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clanked together loudly. Like it? Pinky asked. I made it myself. Desperately, Dash pleaded with the smiling pony before her. Pinky, please. I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Please let me go. I promise I won't tell anybody. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up, and, well, I don't make rules. We can't turn back now. Dash was tearing up. How could this be happening? Ah, oh, don't be sad, Dash, said Pinky. Look, this'll cheer you up. I brought you a friend. Seemingly out of nowhere, Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. It was about pony-sized, but it had a very defining feature. A beak. Dash gaped in shock. Is... is that... Hey, Dash, let's hang together. These ponies are so lame -os. Dweebs, 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 Pinky mimicked. I caught her right before she left town. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? That wasn't enough time to play with her, of course. I had to wait till after the party to do that. But boy, am I glad I did. It was worth it for the flavour alone. Griffins taste like two animals at once. It's amazing. I know she didn't have a number like everyone else in Ponyville, but when was I going to get another chance to try Griffin? I probably should have asked where she came from so I could have gotten more, but I forgot. I'll tell you what though, she was quite the fighter. She lasted a long time, which was a lot of fun for me. I got the chance to play with somebody other than a pony and try new things. It's too bad she had such a meanie mouth. She said so much bad stuff, I just had to take her tongue out. You know, bad language makes for bad feelings, Rainbow Dash. Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and writhed in her tight bonds. Well, Pinky said with an air of finality, that's enough reminiscing. It's time to begin. Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped a scalpel in the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Dash's right flank. Without any flair, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Dash's cutie mark and began a circular cut around it. Dash shouted in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held her still. Finishing the incision, Pinky grabbed a curved skinning knife from the tray. Screwing up her face in concentration, she worked it under Dash's skin and sliced the hide away from the muscle. Dash ground her teeth as she tearfully watched her flesh peel off. Pinky then moved to the other side and repeated the process on Dash's left flank. 
Once she had finished, Pinky held up both cutie marks in front of her friend and started waving them like pom-poms. Dash just whimpered. Her thighs burned like nothing she had felt before. Placing the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. I hope you don't mind. I think I'm gonna wing it now. Pinky laughed. She grabbed Dash's left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds, yanking it back so the sharp pain reignited the fire in Dash's flanks, then stretching the wing out. Pinky brought the blade down hard at the base. Instantly, Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw off Pinky's aim. She tried to hit the mark again, but missed, and carved a huge slice into Dash's back. Dash, you gotta stay still, or I'll keep missing, scolded Pinky as her friend howled. Pinky took another whack and hit her target. She swung again and again. Blood sprayed into the air, but Pinky realised she wasn't getting anywhere. The blade just wasn't going through the bone. Hmm, I guess I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else, stated Pinky matter-of-factly as she tossed the knife over her shoulder, embedding the blade in the table. Through the haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Got it. Say Dash. Why do they call it a hacksaw? It doesn't hack. Hacking is what I was doing with the knife. This is a saw. I don't get it. Pinky placed the tool over the mangled flesh of the last attempt, standing on her hind legs. She worked the saw back and forth with her front hooves. It sliced effortlessly through the bone and skin. The feeling of the jagged teeth grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to the next wing and started soaring. Dash didn't struggle this time. She'd given up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony. Abruptly, the soaring paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a slither. Hey Dash, Pinky piped up. Think fast. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the wing as hard as she could. The bone snapped, but the blue pony's skin held, then tore away. The pull ripped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Dash's back to her rump. Her body seized at the unexpected trauma as her pelvis tensed up. Dash felt a warm release between her legs, and her loud, unnerving melody of pain filled the room. Unable to catch her breath, she blacked out. Dash awoke with a gasp. The stench of her urine filled her mucus-caked nostrils as her vision swam into focus. She saw a very pouty Pinkie Pie removing a large adrenaline needle from her chest. Stomping her hooves, the frustrated Pinky lashed out at her helpless victim. Didn't anybody tell you any manners? It's very rude to fall asleep when someone invites you over to spend time with them. How would you like it if I came over to your house and went to sleep? Oh, I'm sorry, Dash. You're so boring, I think I'll take a nap. You think I like doing this by myself? I told you how excited I got when I found you were next. I was excited to have a friend be here with me while I worked. But no, you've got to be inconsiderate. You know, I thought you were tough. I thought you could handle anything. I've had foals stand up better than you. Do I have to baby you, huh? Is that how you want me to remember you, as a baby? As Pinky stopped to catch her breath, Dash blinked and sobbed softly. Her back was in agony, 
Her sides were on fire, and there was an intense pain in one of her legs. As she blinked again, she saw Pinky pop something red into her mouth and began to chew. Noticing Dash's stare, Pinky quickly gulped the morsel down. What? Pinky asked. Oh, this. She held up another piece. Well, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and helped myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad. Want to try some? Without waiting for a response, Pinky shoved the strip of meat into the revolted Pegasus pony's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spat it out. Pinky frowned and picked up the chunk of flesh. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She contemplated the discarded snotty morsel, then gulped it up. It's not like you haven't had my cupcakes before. Swallowing, Pinky turned her attention to a small can on the tray. She removed the lid, revealing it was filled with red-hot coals. Lying on top of the coals were several large nails. As the adrenaline filled her veins, Dash began to panic again. Picking up the can, Pinky walked over to Dash's left, holding some tongs with her mouth. Pinky carefully picked up a nail and positioned it at the seam between her victim's front left leg and hoof. She then grabbed a hammer and took careful aim. No, Pinky! Dash screamed. No! No! The hammer came down and the nail punctured Dash's skin. The white hot burning was too much. Dash screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces causing her raw skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail, but couldn't find her aim, and let out a frustrated grunt. Then Pinky brought the hammer back to take a wild swing. Dash burst out crying and begging. Please, stop! Please! Pinky rolled her eyes, putting down the hammer and tongs. She walked back in front of her friend, and stared pensively at the broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry this much when she had a live parasite stuffed down her throat. Pinky thought for a minute about what to do next, then had a sudden spark of inspiration. Rotating a wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved to Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into the bottom of Dash's hoof. As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved around and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Next, Pinky went back to her cart and located an enormous battery and controller, which she dragged over to where she was working. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Dash's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flicked the switch. Electricity rocketed through Dash's body. The blue pony reacted immediately. Her body seized, her muscles snapped taut. Dash's hips thrust skyward, her eyes rolled back, and she let out a deep, throat-shredding cry. Pinky giggled and danced in place, then reached down and turned up the juice. Dash convulsed uncontrollably, and her bladder emptied once more. After about five minutes, Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Dash's hooves, and the area reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. Pinky rotated Dash upright again, and tried to snap the drooling, delirious pony back to attention. Dash? Dash! Rainbow Dash! Wake up! Dash moaned, and managed to give a modicum of weak acknowledgement. Pinky studied her handiwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. All right, time for the last round. Dash focused bleakly on the needle, which Pinky took as a question 
as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away, Pinky informed Dash as she walked around to her victim's ruined back. Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle into the lower part of the blue pony's spine. Moving in front of her friend again, Pinky leaned down and elaborated. In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your ribcage. Then, you'll be able to stay awake to watch the harvest. Dash started to cry again. Pinky, she choked out. Yeah? I want to go home, Dash sobbed. Yeah, I can see wanting to do that, replied the party pony. Sometimes I just want to give up. Just say, I'm done with this mess, and go to bed. But you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. You gotta pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're gonna get ahead in life. Dash hung her head and cried. Minutes passed as the drug took its effect. Eventually, Dash was completely numb from her chest to her flanks. At this point, Pinky approached with a scalpel, glancing at Dash and smiling. Pinky made a long horizontal cut across the Pegasus's bony pelvis, just above her crotch. Moving up Dash's body, Pinky made a similar incision under her ribs. Finally, Pinky made a long vertical cut down Dash's stomach, connecting the first two. Looks like I got my eye on you, Dash, Pinky giggled. With a moist, gooey sound, flaps of skin opened. The sight of her own organs and the lack of feeling caused Dash's breath to intensify. Pinky carefully sliced open Dash's abdominal sac and grabbed her large intestines. As she separated the organ from the rest of the digestive tract, and pulled it out of the new cavity, Pinky grew jovial, laughing as she gutted her friend. Pinky began to make jokes. Dash, growing weaker from the new source of blood loss, tried desperately to shut out the macabre comedy act. Look at me, I'm Rarity, Pinky laughed, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck, spraying blood in all directions. It's my new scarf. So pretty. Reaching back inside, she sliced the smaller intestine off from the bowels. Squeezing out the excess excrement, Pinky filed the slimy organ through her teeth and dragged it back and forth. Dentists say you gotta floss every day, Dash. Dash was barely aware of what was going on anymore. The shock was causing her to fade. Disappointed, Pinky dived back into the pony's guts, ramping up her routine. Ah, uh, don't go Dash. Pinky started pulling out the rest of Dash's organs, pausing with each removal. I know I can be a real pancreas, but you know I'm just kidney with you. You really gotta learn to liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting bladder. Guess you gotta develop a stomach for them. Pinky placed the discarded body parts into a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Ooh, bagpipes, she said, placing the end of Dash's esophagus into her mouth and her stomach in her armpit. She squeezed, and a spurt of acid hit her tongue. Ew! Hey look, there's your cupcake, Dash. Dash didn't hear her tremor, she had slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinky, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Dash woke up for the last time, her heart pounding. Warm blood flowed out from the wound in her chest in great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. Pinky brought Dash around onto her back again and straddled the blue pony's chest, scalpel at the ready. You know, Rainbow Dash, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here, but 
but I guess it's my fault. I should have taken it a little slower. Oh well. It was really nice knowing you, Dash. The blade sunk into the blue throat and worked its way up to Dash's chin. Coming back down, Pinky's scalpel then circled Dash's neck. The last thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull and the metal of the blade scraping her teeth. Then she was gone. Pinkie Pie stared into the mirror. She had done a really good job, even keeping the eyelids. She winked, and Dash winked back. Pinkie smiled. But still, she was sad that her friend was now gone. Dash had only lasted 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinkie wanted. She looked back at the cadaver hanging in the centre of the room, the last of her friend's fluids draining into a pan. Yep, no more Rainbow Dash. As she looked, Pinkie cocked her head. She began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In fact, the pink pony mused, I think an idea exploded in her head. She was good at sewing, and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, she just had to get some stuffing, and bingo, she'd have Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, thought Pinky, that's what she'd do for all her best friends, when their numbers came up. She was so excited, she skipped right over to the body with her Skinner to get started. The cupcakes could wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. Alright, let's have a little bit of a chat about this creepypasta. Mainly because I'm in a bit of a bad mood, where I live in Australia, in Melbourne, we're in lockdown, can't leave the house for more than an hour a day to get some exercise, Everything is closed, so I can't go to the gym to let off steam. I just have to go for a run, and that's about it. And yeah, I'm in a bad mood. And partially because of this creepy pasta. Alright, I'm just gonna rant about it because I'm just in that mood. It's a half hour long creepy pasta, and there is no story involved pretty much at all. It's just a big torture scene. Now, when I first started reading this, I thought, whatever, I'll give it a shot. I kept reading it, and then I kind of got partway through, and I'm like, do I even want to put this on my channel? It's kind of a bit gross, and it just felt like it's gross for the sake of being gross. Like, the horse urinates itself three times, because that's totally necessary. Like, did I miss part of the story, where it's getting forced to chug a three-liter bottle of Gatorade between getting each limb hacked off? I don't mind gore. It's sometimes fun. Okay, that sounds kind of twisted, but in certain contexts, it's just like what the horror genre can be. It's alright having a bit of gore, but when it's just over the top for the sake of just trying to be edgy or something, it just feels really unnecessary. Gore and violence does not equal a story. There's got to be some other substance behind it. This was my first time reading the story, and I kept expecting that there was going to be more to it than just a big torture scene. I thought there might be some twist, some build-up, but no, it's all just disgusting torture. So, I wasn't sure if I should even put this on my channel. I nearly didn't, but I spent so long narrating it, editing it, I thought whatever. I'll turn it into a video, and then have a bit of a sook at the end of it, complaining about some random creepypasta online. I know, it's totally a real big deal in the world right now. <laughs> anyway, no big deal, on to better creepypastas for future videos. And this rant was brought to you by my wonderful patrons over at my Patreon page. You guys keep this channel alive and enable me to keep making these videos just like this here on the internet. Because I don't know, maybe this video will get demonetized because it's actually pretty messed up. I hope it doesn't happen, but it might. So thank you so much patrons, you guys are awesome. Any of you guys who want to support me, you can subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff really helps out. And I'll catch you guys next time in the next drawing video. I'll see you then. Bye.